So the first song I ever really liked, like the first song I ever bought on iTunes and like ever listened to, like I actually like thought it was a good song, was um, Stronger by Kanye West. Number two. All right, so I'm, I'm here with Jasper Minson. Hello. Hi. And I'm going to ask you a few questions, all right? Yes. So um, what was the, what's the first memory you really have with music or like listening to music? What's the first thing that you remember? Mm, probably my dad playing Neil Young all hours of the day, mm -hmm. every day. Neil Young was your first band? Well, it was my, my dad's first. band, uh -huh. ev always and all the time, mm -hmm. and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to music discovery, the only person that you can really trust is yourself. And music critic, too. Music critics, they know what they're doing. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I guess my music taste came from uh, my father and my mother. That's, that's where I got it. Um, I never listened to the radio as a kid. The first real piece of music, though, that I started listening to was the Shins album, Shoot Sunero. My father gave it to me for my birthday uh, when I was in first grade. And I put it in my mom's car, and that was all I listened to. That was it. And, and Tony Braxton's The Heat, and uh, Steely Dan, Everything Must Go, and uh, pretty much every Stevie Wonder album. That was and Abbey Road. I think those were those were the things that were in rotation around first, second grade, or first grade. Second grade came Usher and Black Eyed Peas. Big moves, big moves toward pop music. But uh, that was all crushed once I got my iPod in third grade. But I wasn't allowed to own the album, so I just listened to that song, and then I listened to uh, what was it? Oh, Sweet Escape by Gwen Stefani was another big one. That was my like third grade like jam, and it was the first time I realized that like music wasn't just this stupid thing where they were like singing about like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and stuff. You know what I mean? It was actually like like you could have some deeper meanings. You could actually like actually like, have thought provoking ideas. You know what I mean? Like like I listened up like grew up listening to like the Beatles and like all that like not the Beatles, not the Beatles, the Wiggles and all that crap. You know what I mean? Like like oh like we love like peanut butter and jelly and like it makes us so happy and like oh. So I thought music was stupid. Seventh and eighth grade, I started listening to the Beatles. Big fan of the Beatles. Listened to the White Album like 70, 70 times. Like I didn't, I didn't really like. Like the White Album was just the one I listened to the most. Um, oh, what was the other one? Oh, and then I learned how to torrent, and I accidentally torrented the Daft Punk discography. So I had like way too much. No, no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't Daft Punk. What was it? Oh, it was LMFAO. <laughs> the LMFAO discography. So they're like they're they're like one album and they're like one and a half albums. I listened to that. I got that. So I figured out. I found out the like, I found out like the concept of like an album and like, like what a discography and like art it like. So I, that's how I first like figured out about like how like that kind of stuff works. Like how like an artist can have like their like their portfolio and like they have their discography and like they have all different like I I figured out the difference between like an EP and an LP. Summer of sophomore year, I started playing video games a lot. Stay up all night playing video games. I needed something to listen to. So I started listening to like YouTube music. So that was like stuff I would just like find. I would just add them onto like a, like a set list and just keep expanding on it. So it was like, I started getting into like heavy, like hardcore rap, like uh, DMX, like Daft Punk, Kid Cudi. Listen to like some weird stuff. Um, yeah, and then I got into math rock, kind of. But that also, I also got into like stuff like explosions in the sky and like 
Um, what's the other guy? What's the other guy? The one that me and you both listened to in freshman year. Oh, Symbols E Guitars. Symbols E Guitars. Symbols E Guitars. Guitars. Uh, uh, explosions in the Sky. Um, the way I found them. The way I found this music. I just always found music through the internet. It started with MySpace. I didn't have a MySpace account, but my dad um, signed in. And I watched him log in once, and I got his login information. I kind of like stole it, and I'd sign in on my computer back at home in Pennsylvania, and I'd listen to all the music suggestions that his friends would give him. Like one of the original music websites that I um, stumbled upon was IndieRockCafe.com, and uh, it was—I I don't even know—I it, it, think it's still around, but it's not. It was always really badly made. Like it's, it's not a good website. Um, it's not well put together at all. But I was finding music there. So what's the first memory that you have of, like, what's the first, uh, like, artist that you found that, like, you discovered and you're like, this is music that I really love? Uh, probably Pinback. Pinback? I found Pinback through someone who our family knows. I don't even know how we know them, but we do. They're very cool people. Uh -huh. And they were just like, yo, Jasper, you should listen to Pinback. Uh -huh. And I was like a small kid, and yeah, they yeah. were like grown adults. I was like, why are they telling me this? And I did, and it like, it was it was an amazing moment. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's like one of my favorite things, is like finding that band, yeah. All right, so um, like today, how do you usually find music? Like, what do you, like where do you discover new music? Um, I don't know. Uh, usually it's just because I found certain bands already, and then they'll be like, I like this. Or it'll be like the label that they're on. They'll be like, hey, this is a new band we have. I, I mean, it's, yeah, it's usually just a process of doing that. Mm -hmm. So I know you're on Bandcamp a lot, right? You, you, you put your own music on there. And, yeah. Uh, do you really enjoy band? Like, what are your favorite things about that site? Uh, it encourages people to put up their music because, in a way where it encourages everyone to put up their music, even if it's music ever. Mm -hmm. And I love that about it because it's so easy to put up that once it's up, like, for the record, so like yeah. before I started putting it up on the set I have now, I had like three other ones and all of them were terrible. Yeah. Horrible. But I could do that. Mm -hmm. There wasn't it wasn't like content controlled, there wasn't like some huge restriction to doing it. They were like, yeah, just just dump it on the site and it's just there. I love that about it. I don't know. It, it encourages like idiots to keep being idiots until they become less idiots yeah. and then they get good. And it's you know exactly. very very few social media things do that. So. Exactly. I, I love being here too. I wrote great. Thanks for uh thanks for the interview. Absolutely. Also for the record. Uh -huh. I no longer hate New York. And I, it's just because it's this, this is really, it's weird. It's weird because it's like I'm almost, I'm not a klepto. It's not like I want to steal music no matter what. It's like, it's just, I'm an addict, I guess. Like, really, I need more and more and I keep it all. I'm, but I never don't listen to it. Like, I look through my music library and pretty much 85 to 90 percent of that library, I can name you the song type. I, like if I start hearing it, I can name you the song from the album, from the artist, in the year. Like it's really that's that's how dedicated I am to this thing.
and um, what I started doing is I'd make lists because when I'd go visit my father, I could add music to my computer to my iPod because um, nobody had Macs back up in where I lived. Oh, nobody had Macs with my mom in my mom's house, and I had an iPod. And you couldn't really try, I couldn't format it because if I format it, I'd lose all my music. It was this whole complicated thing. It sucked. So pretty much what I do is I go down to the city with CDs from my that my mom had bought over the year and um, over the few months that I hadn't seen my dad or um, uh, or from her huge music collection that I started liking because that that's really how I listen to music was um, either through MySpace or my mom's giant CD collection and I uh, so so for a long time I didn't really have I never it, it I've always had like just a balance a constant flow of just classic music and current music it, it had always been that way and it, it was never due to the radio I, I didn't really I never really listened to commercial radio until seventh grade that's a whole other thing um let's see I I took yeah so I'd make these lists of music and artists that I'd wanted to download and, and I'd take CDs with me and then I'd get to the city and my father showed me how to torrent music he had a torrent client but you had to back in the day you had to pay for that crap you had to buy a subscription to a service that would allow you to torrent and you get like a yearly subscription it was a whole mess back back before it was you know all clean and pirate bay um but so I, i'd type in the artists find the albums just download them right into the thing and boom i have like 70 new albums it's like oh wow 70 new artists and that would cover me for about three months or so and then i'd be itching for more music and i'd start writing down making new lists and i just this just went on and on and on until one day, um, my dad accidentally deleted his entire music library, and my iPod was the only record of any of the music, and I found this person here in Ithaca that was able to extract all of the music from the classic and put it onto a hard drive, and that thing was backed the hell up a thousand times. My, um, my, that, that was the, um... That was the first time I lost my... No, that was the second... First time, yeah, that was the first time that my iPod died. And, um... Second time, I had some songs on there that my father had composed that um, there were no backups of. Except for on that iPod again, because somehow all those files were lost. And, um... The iPod died, and I lost all the music. It was about 80 original songs that my father recorded when he was, like, 20. And it sucked. It was a bummer, because, like, those were some personal recordings for me. I really liked them, and... They were gone, so I learned my lesson, and currently my my music library today is um, approximately this is um, this is less than the actual number, but it's around thirty thousand songs. I'm pretty proud of that. That's taken a while, but um, it's more. I I'm guessing upwards of forty two. Because uh, my my library is backed up in five different locations. It's on uh, two separate hard drives that are updated every six months, and it, they are also on um, in a cloud server with Amazon, in the iTunes Match server, and also on two computers. Or no, one computer, I guess. And then yeah, and one computer. That's that's my full library, and um, then I have partials all over the place, all over the place. Um, and. I, it's just because this is, this is really, it's weird. It's weird because it's like I'm almost, I'm not a klepto. It's not like I want to steal music no matter what. It's like, it's just, I'm an addict, I guess. Like, really, I need more and more and I keep it all. I'm, but I never don't listen to it. Like, I look through my music library and pretty much 85 to 90 percent of that library i can name you the song type I, like if i start hearing it i can name you the song from the album from the artist in the year like it's really that's that's how dedicated i am to this thing and i mean i have a pretty decent memory and it helps